Hi, my name is Sydney, and today I'm going to be watching Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, The Producer's Cut. I got many comments recommending that I watch The Producer's Cut instead, so I caved and I'm going to watch that. But at the very end, I will also be watching like the last 20 minutes or so of the theatrical cut as well to see what the differences are. But I'm really curious to see how they wrap up the storyline of Jamie, and in going to rent it, I did see that Paul Rudd is in this one, which I think I'd seen pop up somewhere else. Like I kind of knew he was maybe in one of these. I didn't realize that there was such a, uh, there's like six years or so in between the fourth, uh, excuse me, the fifth one and the sixth one coming out. I didn't realize there was such a big time gap. So we'll see what that means for Jamie. Here we go. Donald Pleasant's in. Well, I guess he's in this one again. He must not be dead. Oh, and there's that triangle tattoo symbol thing. Okay, okay. Starring and introducing Paul Rudd. Interesting. I didn't realize. I thought he would be a side character that got killed off right away or something. I hope Danielle Harris is in this one again because she really stole the show in four and five. Like, she's the reason why those other two are good. Well, this is sketchy. I'm guessing that's, I mean, I'm just making assumptions at this point. Is that, no, okay, never mind. I thought that was Jamie's character, like older or something. <laughs> Is this Michael being born maybe or? Please, please give him to me. <laughs> Cowboy man. <laughs> no, please, my baby, please give him to me. When Michael Myers was six years old, he stabbed his sister to death. He needed to wipe out his entire family. Jamie, come to me. What? Okay. So wait for them to just kind of... Louis Jamie, just... come with me if you want to save your baby. Oh my god, is that Jamie? What the heck? Oh boy. <laughs> well, it's a quick death, I, I guess, which is good. Hopefully. I like this mask so far better than the last one already. <laughs> What's keeping me hooked on these films really is wanting to know more about like, I just want to know what happens to these characters. I'm interested in the mythology and like the storyline within the, you know, stalking and the chase. Ooh, this is like all of that is a little more passive to me compared to wanting to know. Yeah, I guess it's just the mythology, I guess. <laughs> Strode Realty. So from what it seems like, it, it seemed insinuated that Jamie has been held captive for all these years. Maybe she was forcefully impregnated by someone or something. They just really like cuck. Kill for him. Mommy! Danny? The voice man, he's here. No one's there, sweetheart. But I've seen him. Stay away, monsters. Stay away, ghouls. Stay away from Danny. You jerks know the rules. That was fun. <laughs> you jerks know the rules. Infamous serial killer Michael Myers, his niece Jamie Lloyd, and about a dozen cops were killed in an explosion. We have a caller waiting. Deep down, I think he's just like you and me, Barry. He, he just needs someone to understand him, someone to love him. Yeah, deep down, I'm... That is the big divergence in this series is whether or not he has humanity or whether he's pure evil. I hate to be the one to break the news to you, lady, but Michael Myers has been dead for six years. I don't think he's dead. Paul Rudd. Naughty, naughty. Does this wacko caller have a name? My name's Tommy. I was only eight years old when I saw him, but I was one of the lucky ones. I survived. This is Tommy from the original Halloween, I'm guessing. Man, that line delivery was not great. <laughs> Barry, what happened to that psychiatrist in his room? I heard the old quack was dead. 
What are you looking for? A Not dead. You know, maybe you <laughs> Just very much retired. Okay. I hope they at least attempt to connect the dots there. That's the beauty of the countryside. <laughs> I thrive on it. He looks happy. Uh, don't tell me that the revered. Oh God, what is that guy from? Liar, liar. Oh, keep your eye on that boy, <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> I've come to celebrate. It's so weird. Loomis like this looks like one of my grandpas who's not around anymore. It's making me like <laughs> sentimental. But I, Loomis, he looks good like this with the facial hair and stuff and he had surgery, but I'm like, you were like dead though. <laughs> what? But so much time has passed. I'm, I'm curious what in this universe, what happened to him? Like, did he just believe Michael's dead now? Like, what is his connection relationship with that now? Due to severe weather conditions, all circuits are momentarily busy. What is with this creepy Tommy? After 32 years, guess who is finally relinquishing his duties as chief administrator of Smith's Grove? To new beginnings. Old friends. God, I'm sorry. I just can't believe how much he looks like my grandpa here. That's so... I mean, it's not like identical, but it's very close. It's like... Oh my gosh. You're the one I've chosen, Sam. I want you to come back. After my stroke six years ago, they practically had to hold a pistol to my head to get me to retire. I've buried the ghosts. I buried them in this, in this manuscript. I don't want to practice medicine anymore. Michael Myers. Dang. I like the universe that in which Dr. Loomis has been able to bury the ghosts he's left medicine he looks happy he's living his he's got a skin graft he looks interested in in hobbies and ah uh, bummer <laughs> mm, mm, mm. she looks like winona writer a bit How did he catch up that fast? Also, I'm tripping. I'm like, whose baby is that? I hope it's not Michael's. That would be weird. I like that Michael's hand is still scarred, though. Okay, so Michael has a car. I like how they crash into a pumpkin patch, like how they use all the pumpkins normally in the previous title sequences, but yeah, not this one. What? Oh man, if that's Jamie- You can't have the baby, Michael. <laughs> what a disservice they have done to that character if that is the last of her. It's Michael Myers! Yeah, you stinking kids got about three seconds to get the hell off my property! And those kids wouldn't have even like been alive when all this stuff happened. So someone just lives in that house now? Yeah, which is so weird because that happens all the time. You you might live in a cra- If you have a crazy ass story about something that happened in the house you live in, let me know. That was six years ago, Sam. You'd know she died with him in that explosion. You know it. That's what someone would like us to believe as my friend. I can't go through this again. Not alone. I need your help to stop him. Dude, don't you know by now? I don't think you can stop him, Loomis. Look at you too. You're a weak old man now. That girl, Jamie Lloyd, her body was found this morning near Haddonfield. Oh, gosh. Man, was that it for Jamie? Yes, that Barry Sims. Beth and I are down on this gig. I'm still in shock right now. Damn. What a horrible life Jamie had. Kids, my dear Deborah, what's ruining this country? Everywhere you go, it's the same damn thing. There's no goddamn respect. Living in this house is enough to drive anyone crazy. So they must know. You think going to college is going to make a few mistakes, girl? Oh, that's it, Deborah. 
Yeah, just keep slipping her the cash. You know, while you're at it, I got a great idea. Here, here, why don't you give her all of our goddamn money? God, this guy sucks. Before you came around, everything was going fine. Till you landed on our doorstep. You and that little bastard even. I don't know what this girl did, but that kid did nothing wrong. He's just a kid. Oh. Danny. Stay out of here. for him. Oh, please don't. At first, I was confused on the dynamics here. I thought that that was her husband. Oh. Honestly, good for him. <laughs> Hitting his mom. He's just defending her. Give me the knife, Danny. Yeah, wake up call for you, bro. Don't be hitting people. Another episode of Father Knows Best at the Strode House. Okay, yeah, it's the Strode House. Carol and Danny. I don't think we know them from before. Okay, so if I'm gathering correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we have Tommy, boy from the first one. Tina, the one who was killed in the fifth one, was that that was the little girl who was with tommy being babysat right that's fun that's the stuff that i'm kind of interested in of like what happens to these people especially after you know a decade of trauma like who who do these people become which is especially why i'm excited to get to the most recent two halloween films to see what's happened to Lori after all this trauma can you tell me if a bus arrived from pontiac last night sure did something about his performance so far feels unnatural i can't decide yet if it's really bad or if i just am getting to know the character still uh compared to other paul rudd stuff i've seen obviously more comedy based uh it feels more natural normally but right now he just feels so different than I've, i'm used to seeing him so part of it feels i don't know yeah we'll see we'll see I'm, I'm giving it a chance and if it's an introducing if this is his first movie you know we'll see we'll see <laughs> like even just something about his body language is like i am acting i am touching the sink oh shoot the baby i am opening the cabinet I don't know, something about it feels like I am acting. <laughs> oh, Good God, what's that? It's his mark. Oh, she's alive? Jamie. He's been having nightmares. Uh, uh, I think it's cool. I'm glad on the subtitles it said imitating butthead, because... I mean, I like Beavis and Butthead. I'm familiar with Beavis and Buck Butthead. Mike Judge's work is incredible. But what the hell was that? <laughs> that was a horrible impression. Maybe because it was super topical at the time. Like, I don't know. It just didn't sound very good to me. It just sounded like a bad, I don't know, valley boy. Sam, there's nothing you can do for her now. Yeah, suspicious. Dr. Loomis? Yeah. I don't know you, do I? I'm Tommy. Uh, Tommy Doyle? Lori Strode, Jamie's mother, was babysitting me the night when... Tommy Doyle. Michael Myers has come home, hasn't he? Not to miss. She's not the last. Hey, me and this lady kind of look similar. Uh, I'm very sorry, Mrs. Strode. Uh, I came to help your family. Stephen. Like that name? He's just naming him now. What the? I won't let anything happen to you. Tommy seems not right. He's quite suspicious. But it so far seems like he's on the protagonist's side. What makes you think he'll come back here? This house is sacred to him. He has all his memories here. Don't let your family suffer the same fate that Laurie and her daughter suffered. Jamie, I, I, I thought that- She's been found. Stabbed. The knife was still in her. Okay, I'm tripping now. Maybe this is the family that adopted Laurie? And he told me about the terrible things that happened here in our house. Sepper, what the hell are you doing? Talking to strangers? Letting them in our John, house? John, I'm getting the children out of here. John, I want you to come with us. You've lost it now. You know that, Deborah? You... I like how their names are John and Deborah for John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Your brother could never sell it because of what happened here, could he? Oh, your brother. Okay. 
you know. Okay, 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 okay. I, I got, I get the family tree here now. John's brother was Lori's adoptive father, I, I think. It's interesting that they named the a-hole dad after John Carpenter. I hope that's not a slight, like, stab. I wonder where all the interior shots of the Myers house for all of them were filmed because the layout of like those stairs by the door and um, I don't know the general of the layout of the house from what I can tell just from watching them all once it like reads the same. Hello. We want the child. Who is this? Okay. Um, yeah, the vo distorted voice. I wish it was just like a normal voice. Unless that cowboy guy pops up and his voice actually just sounds like that. But it very much sounds like a scream, you know, voice modifier. <laughs> Damn. She was sweet, too. Well, we'll see what happens to John. What if he comes around and turns out to be a bit of a hero? That would be a nice character arc. You better be there. The Halloween Harvey. What is it with little boys being named Danny the Shining. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just thinking of The Shining. <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works. I've never lived in a like an owned house, but like when you move into a house, how much do they have to disclose to you as far as the past actions of that has household, you know? Like I grew up with a friend in elementary school and I remember her saying that or her mom telling me and uh, that I guess the they lived in a historical home that was built, I don't remember, early 1900s or late 1800s or something, and it was a brothel previously. They were told that by the, I guess, person, real estate agent or whatever. I don't know if that was something they, like, had to disclose or it was just more of, like, a fun fact, like, a hundred years ago, you know, this was that, you know. Ever since hearing that, I'm, I'm like, wow, dang. You just never know what occurred in the space you live in. All those knives sticking up in the washing drying rack. Put those down. If you fell, you'd fall and kill yourself. It's like every leading lady so far has had different colored hair. Like Lori was like a dirty blonde. Rachel was a blonde. Tina was a like dark, dark brunette. Now we got a redhead. They're like trying to make each female lead differently, distinctive, distinctively different. I'm your neighbor from across the street. I'm Tommy Doyle. What are you doing with my son? You're in danger. Come with me. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, there it is. Classic Lon Chaney. I hope this old lady just like survives the whole movie because she can't hear anything and he just like ignores her. <laughs> I like the um, divine magnet on the fridge. Is it gonna be what I said? I hope it's not. Michael, please don't hurt me. Oh God, please forgive me. This is taking a twisted turn. That's it. They're not even telling us for sure. Oh geez, no. The work is done now, Jamie. Damn. Once again, a huge disservice to her character. Jamie. Oh, poor Loomis. Among the ancient druids, Thorn represented a demon that spread sickness, brought death to hundreds of thousands of people. According to Celtic legend, one child was chosen to be inflicted with the curse of Thorn. The sacrifice of one family meant sparing the lives of an entire tribe. So why are you so concerned about us if Michael's only out to kill his family? In his mind, anyone living in his house is his family. Interesting. What would happen if he succeeded? Interesting. If he killed the last member of his family? And Michael's power would end. And the curse would be passed on to another child. That child, I guess? Whoever they are are after Jamie's baby to make a Michael's final sacrifice. Oh. Oh, not so the curse is passed on to... Is it just like a random child or is it... 
a specifically cursed child? Why did they have to like make a baby to kill? You know what I mean? He could have just killed Jamie and that would have been it, right? Come on, Danny. Say goodnight to Mrs. Blankenship. Goodnight, Mrs. Blankenship. He hears the voice, you know, just like the other boy that lived in that house. I was babysitting with him that night. Little Mikey Myers that lived across the street. Mm -hmm. And that's when the voice came. The night he murdered his sister. Michael heard a voice? It told him to kill his family. Okay, so I believe it's little Danny that's cursed. Potentially. Deborah, I'm home! Okay, I feel like there's two paths for this guy. He's about to die. Or on the less likely side, there'll be some sort of character arc for him where he ends up being very helpful and then like dies at the end or something. She actually left. Okay, he's gonna die. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. Oh. This mask's hair is so much more, it looks real thick and like it looks pretty synthetic-y or something, but it looks really like luscious. Like there's a lot of it. That was a cool shot. From outside the window, that in that pan. Mommy, it's raining. It's raining red. Mommy, it's raining red. Okay. It's warm. Why is it warm? What a creep. Kids are so dumb. I mean, unless there's something going on with that kid, but I feel like kids know what blood is. Like, you know. Hey, Beth, can you bring a towel in here? I'm freezing. Oh, Beth's dead. Thanks. Oh, it sucks. Carol, what the hell is going on? Beth, look out! There's someone in the room! He's right behind you! Oh, what the... Stupid kid. Okay, so I'm getting now that the voice is more possibly demonic, especially since it's like an internal, like, curse, perhaps. I'm kind of getting why it's distorted now. They're really bringing back the original score for this one, which is classic. I feel like the last one, they really wavered from that. Um, and it was fine. It, it worked out well. But it just felt like it, the series was pulling further from the core original, I guess. I don't know. But this one feels like they're trying to reel it back while also like to like the traditional stuff that makes Michael Michael as far as like we're really in his house for this one. We're bringing back all the old characters or, you know, Tommy and references to the first one. At the same time, we're kind of pulling further away from the original concept by diving deeper into the mythology stuff. But yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I don't feel connected to anyone in this film yet so far. It just sucks that they killed off Jamie so quick. And I feel like for me personally, it's taken me, like I liked the second one more than the first one. I liked the fifth one more than the fourth one. Like once we've settled into these characters that are honestly not the most well-written characters either, it gives me more time to feel connected to their journey. I'm just like, oh, all these new people and they're just thrown immediately into the, the threatening scenarios. I just don't have a lot of um, empathy. I don't care for them really. <laughs> Like that mom character was like sweet and stuff, but that was kind of it. I don't know. I think Loomis is the one, only one in this film where I really feel that connection to, obviously, because he's been in like all of them. And he's just a solid actor. His character has, at this point, been able to show a good range of depth to his character. I don't know. Like, will we just kind of understand him a little bit more now? <laughs> Come to mommy. Daddy, please. Boom. 
baby? Where's the baby? Who else knew I had the baby? No one. No. There had to be someone else. Who knew? Someone else. Me and Danny. Come to me. Could they hear that? What the? No. Please. Careful with the girl. What a twist. They got me there. Mrs. Blankenship. Oh, God. Hurry. We have to. Hello, dear. <gasps> Oh my god. Okay, okay. Okay, this is taking an interesting turn. I think Michael is under the influence of an evil rune. Thorn? Well, there are runes of light, protection. The evil could be destroyed. That is something that just made this more interesting is the whodunit kind of the surprise of who who mr cowboy was jamie escaped last night i knew she would come to you and i knew that you would lead us to her baby it's your destiny sam it lives inside you it always has you know that don't you the gift of thorn i protect michael watch over him now it's time for you I thought Michael was a monster, but you... In some ways, it's saying Michael isn't really accountable for all of his actions, and that, especially with the, la with the last one, where he almost feels like he has a choice between embracing humanity or evil, and he chooses evil, but it seems like he doesn't really have a choice. Here are gifts to Thorn. Your journey begins. Kill for him, Michael. Your final sacrifice. Don't kill the baby. You know whose baby it is, don't you? Michael! The baby is yours, isn't it? Isn't it, Michael? Back off! Uh -huh. Okay, that was confirmation of that. That's dark. Yeah, I don't think so far we've had anyone really other than Michael. Am I tripping? Other than Michael who's been like in on it too. Shit! Is he gonna make a, a light ruin? Get in there! Interesting. I've said that so many times in this. There is something very new about this this sixth one that hasn't been done in the other ones. I'll give them that. Power of the runes stopped him. Kind of like the third one, there's a lot more of this like magical sort of element behind it. What have they done to you? What does that mean? Was that fist for Dr. Wynn? Was it towards them? This music makes me feel like Loomis is actually about to die. Who knows at this point, right? It's all over. Oh. Michael's gone. It's your game now, Dr. Loomis. So what, now he's like the protector or something? Like it's been passed to him? Ah! <laughs> He's wearing that outfit now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, not the cowboy boots though. What? 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 No way that's how it ended. Oh, no. What? What even just happened? What even just happened? No. Guys, this is... This is not... This is not it. I don't accept it. This is the producer's cut. 
Okay, so just to break down, let me see if I have this right. There's a weird cult led by Dr. Wynn as of now, where it seems that he is the protector of the cursed one who is basically been cursed by Thorn, which is a dark ruin. And his curse is that he needs to kill his family. And once it is fulfilled, the curse is then, uh, like, fulfilled to the next, to a, to a new child. I don't understand how, but that's what it seems. And it seems like Dr. Wynn was preparing Loomis to take over for him, which is weird because Dr. Loomis is, seems, like, way older than the Dr. Wynn dude. Like, why would you give this old dude who's, like, been through hell and a stroke and he has a cane and stuff this intense job? But okay. Tommy put up a little like barrier to stop Michael and then he Michael must have been doing that fist to Dr. Wynn because then he clearly like knocked him out and switched their clothes so is he now choosing to like leave the cult or something because she was like you know that's your baby like you don't want to do this kind of thing and now he's mad at Dr. Wynn for basically making him do all this stuff kind of or I don't know and now Loomis has been given the new has been passed on the uh, it was a thorn thing what the hell <laughs> That I will acknowledge that it said at the beginning of the critics in our um, in memory of Donald Pleasant. So that's that's sad. This must be his last film. Then he really does add so much to these films as far as his presence and performance is so strong and consistent and like grounds the film in a different sort of way. Yeah. So that's sad to think of him not being that sort of anchor for all the films. Um, yeah. I have to look up the theatrical ending right now. Okay, let's see what this is. Hopefully this is it. It's just some YouTube video, so. Help me, please! Help me! (laughs) Like, how many chase scenes do we need, though, in these movies? I feel like this energy is very repetitive through these films. Wow, I cannot believe how uh, different this is so far. But I felt like this confrontation was missing in the producer's cut. So I'm curious to see how this ends. Okay. There's that. Oh, okay. so weird what the heck (laughs) boy what a schlocky ending for both of them like they really just feel thrown together like the writing was just not finished or something like they couldn't decide it almost feels like the producing company was fighting with the director or produce what was the producer's cut okay so maybe yeah the producer was fighting with the director, I don't know, but it feels just like not together, you know, (laughs) like there was some sort of disagreement. So I guess the pros would have to be, I like that they really did try to shoot for something that was a little different. I think that's why the more I've thought about three and after I sat with three, I really liked three. I would watch three again It was a very unique experience. This isn't quite that unique, obviously, but I think in the run of like the Michael Myers thing and the tropes that have been developed, it feels, in the patterns in general, it feels like they really tried to break this one up a little bit with um, including more of the mythology and diving into that. So I appreciate the leap into that zone. I think the characters were very underdeveloped, but as a pro... I do like that they added in Tommy Doyle and I like that they attempted while adding in all this new stuff to try to keep it connected to the originals with so they didn't 
jump like too crazy far off like they try to just connect these ideas so I appreciate that the mask in this one was better than the last one I'll give them that boy was that an unsatisfying ending to an otherwise surprisingly good follow-up trilogy four five and six per usual it seemed like Loomis was dead and then they brought him back and I was happy that he was back even though once again they kind of gave us a lame really unexplained reason for his return like oh I guess he just had a stroke when he collapsed on Michael in the previous one but whatever he's fine now I guess so it was like nice to have him back but also you know classic like the writing was just underdeveloped I can't tell what they were quite going for at the end there almost seems like they were leaving it open for I don't know well you know what I don't really know what they were going for to be honest possibly they were leaving it open for another sequel for a seven to feel I just didn't really feel any closure for some reason uh with both endings the theatrical one it leaves it more open like the original one of like oh he's just gone like you can never stop him yeah just kind of like an ambiguous Michael's not dead sort of ending where it kind of closes the story but like also you're like what happens to the baby and all of them like you can kind of just assume that it's this pattern that's repeating the producer's cut ending is also leads to potentially a storyline follow-up in that so what Loomis is now has the thorn or whatever and Michael is now just rocking the cowboy outfit maskless which is very crazy to if they were to follow that up with in the, in, a, in another movie which I don't think they do but with Michael just being Michael and what does that mean for him yeah I don't know there's a lot of room for his character I think to change with that kind of last narrative of him now being a father and his choice of like leaning into humanity versus just being doomed to be evil forever the way Paul Rudd portrayed Tommy Doyle was very suspicious I thought for sure he was going to end up being bad but he didn't which is cool it kind of when it went against like I don't know if he was a red herring or if it was just purely the way he was acting it but he was so creepy in his delivery with everything that he just seemed so suspicious but I suppose that is the paranoia within him because of all the trauma and he's never been able to let go so he's just kind of an on edge like unsocialized person perhaps but in general Paul Rudd's performance was not stellar my first introductions of him are in Clueless which he does a better job in I don't know how much later that that is than this but maybe like two years or something but it seems that those sort of characters are have been more successful for him (laughs) Let me know what you guys think of Halloween 6. That was a journey. Oh, I can't not mention again how they totally disrespected Jamie Lloyd's character by having her end so weakly without much context and like to what's happened to her the past whatever seven years. I don't know. Her character was just kind of pathetic and I get I I can understand why her character would be very weak and just like worn out at that point you know if she's been like captive all those years who knows what they've been doing to her like she's just a broken person by this point like who wouldn't be I get that I'm not saying she's supposed to be like a superhero or something but something about her portrayal just felt very I don't know I just don't think the acting was very good compared to Daniel Harris which just gives her more credit like she killed it in the other two so I was so I think I was just bitter not to have her in it again other than those flashbacks and then they added on to that a little bit with like an explode with like 
her getting taken or whatever. I'm trying to think of what they could have added though to make that feel more like satisfying for me. I don't know. Her relationship with Michael has been so... She... I think she understands him more now. Especially from the fourth to fifth one. She's seen different aspects of him. I think she understands that he's just a person. Like she's like, you're just like me or whatever. Even though he still goes ballistic on her after she says that I still think she has an understanding of like this man is related to me and has a lot of issues kind of like there is a, a, a simplicity she's able to grasp within, within that so when she's tied to that table and she's just like Michael don't hurt me like I don't know I feel like they could have made that a bigger moment there like in the way that she cries out to him when she's laying in the coffin in the last one how she's like uncle like blah 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 like she's really trying to reach out to him in that moment but what does it do in that moment to be like don't hurt me like okay like that's ever worked you know I wish that would have been more of a moment to see Jamie come out there for she could have referenced something from a previous film we could have seen a bit of her essence from the previous movies shine within there somewhere possibly um or just in another spot it just it never felt like the Jamie from the other movies essence connected to this Jamie other than the fact that she had the, it was her like she had the same name it was her but yeah the essence of the characters felt very different which yes a lot of years have gone by but they you know it's still the same person like it's it's just the writing they just didn't write her very well I don't think well from first viewing I don't know that I have much more to say about it and that always happens when I watch these films and do this reaction I'm just saying what comes off the top of my head instantly and then over the next like two or three days like more information starts brewing and I kind of form different opinions about characters or usually actually in these movies it's been a positive thing like I've appreciated different aspects of it more as it's kind of simmered but this one just has not I don't know how uh, I don't know how it will age with me if anything from what I understand it seems that this is the ending of this storyline we're gonna like erase the whiteboard now and jump to a different universe within the Halloween franchise and I'm kind of okay with that now that Jamie's gone, I'm like, well, forget this. <laughs> like, let's go back to Lori. Let's let's pretend she didn't die and just like see what happened there. And I had a good suggestion that at the end I should do a ranking of all of them. Um, why don't I go ahead and kind of give you where my ranking is so far. And then by the time I finish the last one, uh, I will like update it and it might change a lot. Who knows? But this is just literally off of the top of my head right now okay I'm gonna say because like when you first watch a movie for me at least when I first watch a movie versus how I feel about the movie as time has passed it sometimes can be very different in the bottom spot Halloween 6 <laughs> I just didn't enjoy it in the fifth spot I think I'm gonna put Halloween 4 in the fifth fifth place because you know what I won't even explain myself now I'll make a video at the end where I talk about why I rank them what and they could change so this is just like so you, so you can see where I'm at right now in fourth place I'm gonna say Halloween 3 I still appreciate that movie a lot now third place I'm gonna say Halloween 1 I know controversial it should be in the first or second spot right I feel like people most people would argue that and or they say it's the best because it's the original or whatever but I'm just telling you what's in my heart uh thinking offhand of which one I felt the most energetic about and connected to don't hurt me uh, don't hate me second place I'm gonna say Halloween 2 and first place Halloween 5 but I don't know if it's just because I just did Halloween 5 it's like fresher and I enjoyed it so who knows this list may change but for now that is where my feelings are at criticize me all you want okay this video is going on kind of long so I better wrap it up thank you so much for watching if you made it this far please let me know where Halloween 6 this movie 
particularly ranks in your favorite to least favorite you can give me your whole list like I just did or you could just tell me is it your least favorite is it kind of in the middle for you yeah I'm just curious about what others think about this ah <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next one